Okay. So you guys remember my, my post pack? Okay. So what I'm doing is my latest project. I'm just putting a head tracker on there. So you can have a quick look at this. Um, look, this is just a, it's just a two four dollar gimbal from uh, Hobby King. And it's just one of these security cam 2000s on there. I made a little 3D cover for it. I'm going to make a little uh, attachment to make that a bit more secure. So what I've done is... is I've put together a little Arduino board with a 9 degree of freedom IMU on there. And I've connected it through to my... Um, my controller at the back and I'll, I'll show you how I've done that. It's actually quite easy. It's just three wires and you can see what I've done. So um, so actually this is going to go on the fat shark glasses somewhere. Um, it needs to be this way oriented. There's a reset button here. Okay, brings you back to centre. And theor theoretically um, I should be able to fly, look left and right, up and down or combination and just get a better view of uh, what's around me now not many people have tried flying quadcopters with uh, head tracking units so, so yeah it might, uh, might be a little bit more difficult especially with my FPV skills anyway so but um, look I think it's an interesting project um, I'll, look I'll, I'll put you through to all the links just have a look down the bottom of the video and um, you know I was really literally um, I think nine dollars for the board and another nine dollars for the uh, for the Arduino and just a bit of soldering. Um, like I said, four dollars for that and a couple of servos. So, like, it's a really cheap project and it's supposed to be a a, a really good system. Um, in fact, it uses a, an onboard compass so that there's actually supposed to be no drift. Now, if you do for some reason have to change orientation, you move around in your seat like I do then you can uh, reset that, okay? And it goes back to the center. Some people put a reset switch on the actual control, which will mean running an extra wire from here to the controller. But um, look, uh, as long as you sort of know where the center is and uh, don't move around too much, I think you should be okay. Uh, anyway, looking forward to testing this out in real life. Uh, as you can see, my... Uh, my post pack needs a bit of repair before I can get it up in the air anyway, but um, but I should get that back together soon. And yeah, we can test this baby out. Should be fun. Okay, just wanted to quickly show you some of the mixing. So I'm using the ER9X. Um, I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, I've added a PPM7 and PPM8. Eight channel okay so these two signals go through the PPM okay which is the, the yellow wire um, and then all you need to do then is uh, obviously you need a you need at least an eight channel uh, receiver so basically you just, just hook those up to uh, channel seven and eight and you should be right to go so I just want to show you the connection diagram inside the back of the Tunigi 9X. So as you can see, the red wire is down on the third connector. The black wire is down on the fourth. And the yellow wire, which is the signal, the PPM signal itself, is on the second um, spot there. So look, it's just three solder points. And um, it should be right to go. It's actually quite, quite a simple setup. Um, now you do get power, which is the great thing about this thing. You get power from the actual Turnigy itself, which is you know roughly 10 volts or so, or 12 volts if you're running a 3S LiPo. Um, I'm running a LiFi, but the board, the Arduino board itself, is uh, is capable of handling up to I think 20 volts. Um, I'm not sure the actual figure, but just make sure you connect it to the right uh, point. Because um, one of the points on the Arduino is for, a, I think, a 5 volt input, and the other one is just for a raw voltage input. That's that's the one you want to connect to, okay? And it's um, it's quite capable. 
Okay, so good luck. I mean, look, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, I will try to point you through to the, uh, the, the parts of the thread that I've, I've used um, just for the soldering. Um, you know, and there, there is a calibration program. So just with that, I'll just quickly show you, okay? Okay, so just quickly, I'll show you the, um, the software that we use to calibrate this device. Um, as you can see, there is a USB input there. So we'll just hook it up. Okay, now, just a note, if your computer does not recognize the device, it's most probably, uh, there's, there's two, two things that can go wrong. One is it doesn't actually have the bootloader flashed. Now, if you're getting this blue light, then you have got the bootloader flashed and it's just a bad cable. Now, if you don't have the bootloader flashed, um, I don't know, it's going to be really tricky because, uh, you know, there, there are a few ways to do it. You're going to have to Google it. It's, it's, I can probably talk you through it, but it's, it's not an easy process. Um, yeah, you're going to need to, to flash it. So, um, look, um, most of them come with a bootloader flashed. I got this from Dill Extreme and it was ready to go. I couldn't get it working because my cable was actually bad. Okay, so try different cables. Try the one that came with it, first of all. So, um, anyway, this is the GUI software. Okay, as you can see there. So I'm just going to pick the um, COM port. And I'd say it's COM12. I'll press connect. Okay. So I was just trying to connect there. There you go. Settings retrieved. Firmware 104. So you, you're going to use um, this Arduino software, I guess, to flash the firmware. Um, but once it's done, you use this uh, this program. So what we'll do is we'll go start plot, and you can see here that um, you know as we start moving this thing around, you can see um, the plot moving. You know we've got our yaw, we've got our pitch, you know we've got our roll. Okay, so. If you can't distinguish between these three movements, uh, which you probably won't be able to at first, you, you're going to need to calibrate it. Okay, so to calibrate it's quite simple. Okay, so we'll just stop that. And what you do is you go into tools, and there's two calibration methods. There's an axis and a rotation. Okay, um, look. I'll tell you which one I, I actually like. I think I, I actually like the axis method. Um, look, if you don't have any success with the axis method, try the rotation method. Uh, once you do calibrate it successfully, you'll be able to check the plot and you'll, you'll know exactly that, okay, the roll's working independently, the yaw's working independently, okay, everything's working as it should. Um, once you, you're happy with, with everything working and it's all calibrated, what you do then is um, you just select the PPM channel here. So you select what channel you want for pan, tilt and roll. Again, these line up to, um, you can set these up on, on Open9X to anything, but you know, obviously the easiest is if you set the PPM6 to channel 6 and the PPM7 to channel 7. So I'm, I'm only using the, um, uh, the, what am I using, the tilt and pan channels here so you can actually drive three servos but I'm only driving two okay look that, that's about it with the software okay once you've done the calibration through here it actually saves all your settings you don't need to save it but if you do any changes in here um, yeah just just press the uh, the store settings button that's about it um, you should be ready to go now I'll just um, I will show you where to get the firmware and again um, you will need to use the the Arduino software Okay, once, once your device is recognized, um, you will need to use that Arduino software to actually install the firmware. Okay, and if you've done a multi wee board, um, you know, look, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll have a bit of a look. Okay, hey, uh, just quickly, I'll just show you the, uh, the site, the RC Group's um, page for that. It's the DIY head tracker, easy build, no drift, open source. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the project, okay, so you can have a look here at uh, some examples. Um, 
you know, similar to, to what I've shown you. And um, there's some places you can buy, uh, you know, the Arduino Nano. Make sure you get that the right one because um, it does the software doesn't really port over too well onto other Arduinos. So, so get the one with the USB. It's a little bit easier to use. Um, get the Nine Axis IMU that they recommend. Um, these are really old prices, so they're they're about nine dollars now. So um, the whole project is quite cheap to set up. Um, so yeah, you've got the code and, and GUI, you've got uh, you've got the connections. So an easy way to actually do the connections is to is to is to actually place the um, the IMU board directly over onto the Arduino as such. Okay, so this is this is what I've actually done. I've actually you can see that uh, some of the legs are used. Uh, some of them aren't. So the ones that aren't used, you can you can cut those off if you want. Um, and the ones that are used, you can you can actually solder those through. Okay, so there is there are a few legs that actually line up. Okay, so again, it's just going through the the whole calibration bit and whatever. Um, you, know, you can see there um, that the IMU just just goes over the board. Uh, there's a few different orientations um, and then there's um, you know just a couple of little wires you need to solder actually I think it's just one wire that you need to solder to get it all going but um, there, there is also the reset wire so there is a little bit uh, of extra wiring okay so here it, it runs you through the um, you know how to install the firmware Okay, and it just says, you know, what you need to do. So the type of board is the Arduino 328. Um, you know, select your serial port, upload. Look, it's it's quite straightforward. Just just uh, message if you have any issues and I'll, I'll try to talk you through it. Okay. Um, again, this is how we'd probably mount it on top of the Fat Sharks. One thing I can tell you though is I did mount it um, on the controller here like that and it doesn't actually work. Um, look the magnetometer in this thing is uh, quite sensitive to, to I guess electrical uh, interference and um, mm -hmm. look it, it, ideally you know if it's in mid-air it'll work the best but try it on top of the glasses if it's not working for you you're just gonna have to move it but I think it, from the sound of it, it looks like a few people have had uh, good success mounting it on top of the glasses uh, like that okay so um anyway like i said just just uh, fire through any questions if, if i need to i could do another video okay so